salvation from misery and sin here on Earth does not. This doesn't look like salvation from misery and sin. The wicked pray for deliverance from the fires of hell. While piling the kindling high. They proclaim their love for their Lord, yet in his name they serve themselves. Their self-regard crumbles in the light of their hateful iniquities. So, so true. Mr. McCraith. My friend, I'm so glad you agree. Now the wicked man never questions- I have your answers. What? Yes, good. Perhaps we should discuss this privately, if you'll give me just a moment. It's quite the story. You might not wish to hear it. Neither may the good people hear. Please, this is not the time. We want to hear the story. Let the Banisher speak. Tell them, Red. Tell them good. Ah, there's a story that starts with a question. A question for you, Governor. And maybe for all the good people of New Eden. If I give you a witch, will you do what you did to Deborah Comenius? Comenius, say you? The school teacher walked with the devil and paid the appropriate price. That's the beginning of the history and also its end. Is it, though? Now, I've learned much about Deborah Comenius and what happened to her, and it tells a very different tale. And what story, pray you, does it tell? It tells the story of a man, a latter-day King Solomon. When plague struck his subjects, they turned to him for guidance and protection, for they were God-fearing folk, and he was a godly king. The king turned his flock to God, but it was not enough. The plague spread on. The king, worried about his position, needed a sacrificial lamb. You lose the run of your tongue, Mr. McCraith, and of the head to which it's fixed. There was no lamb. There was a trial, fair and lawful. The trial was not fair. You had no proof, and you knew it. Credible witnesses gave believable testimony, sir. Witnesses like Gibbs, who pressured you into a guilty verdict to avoid being suspected of witchcraft yourself. There was pressure, I'll not deny it. But I did what I did to protect the colony. It was a difficult time. The picture of yourself that you hold in your mind is that of a great occultist. To repel the devil, the wise and fearless man must learn the black spy's tricks. Have you ever wondered what lies beyond the veil, past the hem, beyond the invisible? Have you ever heard of the Aralu? What gibberish is this? No. Your good friend Etienne Roulet did not, it seems, bring you worthy of his secrets. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Do you then consider yourself a true demonologist? In order that a war be just, 
three things are necessary. Firstly, the authority of the sovereign. Secondly, a just cause. Thirdly, a rightful intention. Aye, the Summa Theologiae of St. Thomas Aquinas, a classic quote from which you have conveniently omitted an important detail. To wit, a just cause is required, namely that those who are attacked should be attacked because they deserve it on account of some fault. You're a pompous coward, fearful of anyone different, as human as that is. There must be a man to judge, or there is no order. A man to make the judgment, and a man to enforce it. Of all people, you know this. I live and let live. I choose only for the dead. I choose for the living. These people are sinners, sir, and must be led back to the light. This is my mandate, my duty. What do you really want, Governor? I wish only to serve. I am the trusted servant of the good people of New Eden. Without me, they're lost. Without them, you would be lost. Yes. Maybe I do need them. A very human of me. But these people undoubtedly need me, Mr. McCraith. And there is no one else. Admit it! You toy with magic, you don't understand. You, sir, are jealous. I, sir, am tired. I've done my job, fulfilled my contract, I've found the source of the curse. The poison below the well is no more, no thanks to you. Aha! Poison it was then. The weapon of the wicked, to weaken the people's will. What was it, Belladonna, Hemlock, Foxglove? Betrayal! Truth unspoken, secrets and lies, wrongs, basically, your wrongs. The wrongs you visited upon Deborah Comenius, the wrongs that led to her death. She died at the hand of the body politic. She died at all our hands. Most of all, she died at her own. She died because she would not submit. Twas not my plan to kill her, stupid, stubborn woman. Why did she not confess? I would have granted clemency. I would have shown her mercy. You had the power to stop the madness. But instead, you chose to let it run all the way to its barbaric conclusion. You brought the curse down on New Eden. Then you called we banishers in to fix your mistake. You boast of your knowledge of demons and spirits, but in truth, you master nothing. You're a peacock. All show and no meat. I'm not here today to bring justice. But this... Man, your governor brought death to your doors. <laughs> he deserves blaming. And shame on me if I don't do it. <gasps> <It's best. gasps> Friends. Have I ever not served the interests of our community? Have I not protected you? Have I not loved you? This is all 
Is the evil gone for good? Far from it. Then who will protect us? I will. While Mr. McCraith fights the curse of New Eden, I will protect the people of the Harrows. Or at least, I'll try. Now let's all return to our homes and pray for forgiveness and uh, the strength to bear the consequences of our actions. Your fee. One of the many debts my father left me. You'd best put your own debts first, young Master Haskell. Don't I know it? I hate this place. Rest up, then please, let's get out of here. You're angry. Can tell. Of course you can. Aren't you angry? I'm what? Disgusted. Disgusted by what we saw down there. By the sins Fairfax Haskell committed in the name of his god. I hope they'll burn in hell. For that I hate myself. Nothing can stand between us. Not even death. Not even death? The closer we get to my body, to the truth about what happened here, the stronger I feel. My senses rise. It's as if I can taste the silence, smell the scent of wood smoke, feel the warmth of your body, feel Deborah's wrath. I feel it as if it were my own. I know her rage. But that anger of mine, that fear, I thought when I left home, I'd left them behind. You thought by becoming a banisher, you'd overcome your anger and fear. I thought at least I'd gain control. I'm a big bad banisher. I fear no ghost. I understand now that this control was but a mere illusion. So much so that the sister I thought was gone for good seems to be winding her way back to me. Your sister, Ayomi Day, wasn't it? No. As a child, before I left Cuba, I had a friend. I chose to call her my sister. That night, the night I died, I dreamed of her. 
I dreamed of Calendre. Did you go looking for her? Was she near him? It's not beyond the realm of possibility. It's so far beyond the realm of possibility you wouldn't believe it. No, she wasn't there. But I heard her voice. I'd swear on it. How could that be? Dreams can be vivid. It can be difficult to separate them from reality. I was awake, Red. What did you hear her say? I don't know. I don't remember. I think she said we were family. Never to be divided. She's after my job. She can't have it. I'm your family now. Nothing's tearing us apart. No. Not even death. Still angry? Gloriously. Ceridian? Holy shit. Hurry, please. Ceridian, what's wrong? I don't think she can hear us. We need to go back to the swamps. Is that really Ceridian? How did she pull that trick? I think maybe she used the invisible to speak to us through the crow. Pity it doesn't work both ways. Imagine having a conversation with someone far away. Can you feel it? I have goosebumps. The veil is tearing at the seam. If I bruise the bud so the spectres inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. can get to that ivy from the other side.
Gardening tip. We can get to that ivy from the other side. The wards have weakened. Ceridian's power wanes. If I bruise the bud so the spectres inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. Nobody's home. I can feel it. Who oh, there? Where could they be?
crows. They flock to that great tree up there. If I bruised the bud so the spectres inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. Like you need it. 